pleasant greetings to everyone and welcome back to another episode of our venture in the visual novel adventure of a lifetime last episode chisa was quite in a funk to which it involved finn in the fact that the two of them possibly were going to part ways it appeared like but as things turned out, it looks like that was false, and Finn decided to stay alongside Chisa, to which they did a spectacular water acrobat show, if you will. And on the last portion, Chisa asked, of course, kind of telepathically, if Finn could do one particular trick. So let's find out what that trick was that she wanted him to do. Let's take a look. And for good measure, we shall repeat. Chutaro, kore dekiru? Kyu, kyu, kyu! Umai, umai! What, what did they do? Kyu, kyu! Matigaite mungen ni umarete shimatta sakana tte kanji ne. Ooh, shots fired. A fish? More like a marine mammal. Heedless of their audience, Chisa and Finn dance all across their aquatic stage. <laughs> Looks like she had a good time. Until they're derp tired. Yep, that happens. You sure about this? There was a hint of loneliness lurking behind Chisa's usually cheerful smile. You can change your mind if you want, there's still time. But Chisa's resolve hadn't swayed one bit. I see. Very wise. Chisa. Kyutaro! On hearing Chisa's call, Finn swam over to us, his head poking out of the water. As she rubbed Finn's nose, he happily splashed about with his fins. He had certainly enjoyed his time with Chisa as well. <laughs> Finn looked worried and could probably sense his friend's impending loneliness. Chisa took a deep breath and dived back into the ocean. Chisa swam closer to Finn down in the waters turned to liquid gold by the setting sun. After hugging him one last time, she removed the shell necklace from around her neck. She held it up for him to see. Well, I didn't expect this to happen, but I can understand. Chisa let go of the necklace. The shells and core drifted together towards the bottom of the sea. But... Finn just swam down and brought it back up. She took the necklace back and dropped it again. I don't think he wants to let go. But he just went down to retrieve it again. Without another look at the necklace, Chisa climbed back onto the canoe. 
Finn swam up to the surface with the necklace hanging from his snout. Bye bye, Kyutaro. Chisa waved and started up the engine. He chased after us, but Chisa didn't look back. Chisa, is it okay? It's not good. Emily looked behind us, her expression heartbroken. Finn was following, but when he realized Chisa wasn't going to respond, his fins sank beneath the waves and. We lost sight of him. He had always been smart, even for a dolphin. There was no doubt he knew what Chisa had meant by giving up her shell necklace. This was too much for Emily and I, so we knew whatever Chisa was feeling had to be even worse. She didn't let it show, though. The sun dipped below the horizon, just like it did every night. The world would keep spinning regardless of our pain. In the sunset, the ocean was dyed a beautifully deep shade of red. Oh boy, that's definitely heartbreaking. The day after leaving Finn behind, Chisa was in high spirits. The difference was so stark. Cranky Chisa seemed like nothing more than a bad dream. Emily watched Chisa zip around the cafe. Why's that? Ryota muttered, looking more depressed than I'd ever seen. For once, I can understand where she's coming from. Chisa let out a long sigh. Chisa let Finn go so he could live with the other dolphins. He'll be much happier in the long run. She'd already been through this with Ryota, but I tried to drive the point home one more time. ほら、見ろ。やっぱり俺のせいだ。うるさいよ。営業妨害だ。エミリー、そいつを追い出しちまいな。なあ、じゃ、というわけだから、さっさとお会計してお引き取りください。この鬼ババア。I'd say she's about 80% of that, from what I'm seeing right now. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> Ryota dashed off in tears. <laughs> Emily ran out after him. How about that, the noisy bunch? Woo! Talk about a crazy surname. What? I'm looking at my 
あ、もしかして惚れちゃった I don't think he's gonna go that far. At least not yet. What? Huh? What now? Don't be stupid. Jordan, John. Baka, I know the show. Kizutsukua. Chisa pouted as she walked away to attend to some customers. Hironi, Iman, no, can't tend this, no. Shinami delivered her verdict from the counter where she'd been eating one of my original kids' meals. Well, what should I do to get a perfect score? How many romance animes do you watch? Because I got a sneaky suspicion you watch a lot of romance anime. Pretty sure I'm more embarrassed than you are. And quite frankly, I think he would have lost either way. Because at the end of the day, as much as they've been pestering him, I'd say that was a legitimate response. But now, when he responds with a bit of sternness, now all of a sudden it's a problem. Emily wasn't worried about Chisa. No one was. Why would they be? She looked like she was doing fine. Except she didn't look fine to me. She's a little too happy. Could it be that she was putting on that cheerful exterior to hide how she was really feeling? Or maybe that was just what she needed to do to deal with the pain. It'd be nice if she was comfortable enough to feel sad around me, though. I complained aloud without even realizing it. I mean, we're supposed to be buddies, right? Ever since we met during my first summer in Ogasawara, we'd always trusted each other more than anyone else. That is, until we started junior high school and I stopped visiting. I was in no position to complain and I felt like an idiot for being offended. Hey, Chinami. Do you know why Chisa started working here? Is she saving money for something? Chinami's hand clenched around her fork as she thought hard. I don't think that is the possibility. It's not, Im it's not impossible, but I would say it's probably improbable and unlike unlikely. I'm just saying. Not, I'm not trying to hate on you. I'm just saying. Uh, Chinami, the computer is only part of it, but if you have a bad internet connection, there's just as much chance of lagging. Take it from me. I, I'm in the world of IT. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but I don't think that's it. Whatever Chisa was up to, she didn't, she had, oh, pfft. Whatever Chisa was up to, she hadn't shared it with her family. Is she still single? I mean, it's fine if you don't know. So they have substandards. Maybe you'd be closer if you left your room more often. Is that right? Of course, of course. So that's why. So that was why things were awkward between Chisa and I at first. Hmm. 
Are you going to teach them, or are you just going to let them remain ignorant? That's the part that always irked to me, even in my own walk. It's like, okay, if I'm ignorant about something, can you at least educate me in the right direction, not just point out my issue and just leave me in the dirt? That drives me crazy. That drives me absolutely crazy, which is probably why I'm going to be single for a long time, because I can't stand that kind of drama. Chinami said with a despairing shake of her head before digging into her pudding. All too soon, it was closing time, and the last of the customers trickled out. Does that include your grandson? Chisa took off her apron and got ready to leave. Wait up, Chisa. Let me walk you home. I'll take care of that later. Emily came in with the assistant and... Oh, pfft. Emily came... Emily came in with the assist and I was grateful for her help. Okay, thanks. I promise I'll help out when I get back. Waved out by Emily, Chisa and I left the cafe. Hey, want to go walk by the ocean? Nande? Mm, just because. Omora Beach was right in front of the cafe. So a little detour brought the two of us onto the sand in no time. At this hour, there was hardly anyone around, and the only sound came from the waves washing over the shore. Remember that time we saw the sea turtles laying their eggs on the beach? Mm. Omura Beach was the most popular spawning spot in the Ogasawara Islands. You could see tons of sea turtles here after dark. Seeing them cry as they buried their eggs in the sand was strangely touching. It was apparent that she hadn't figured out my plan yet. Do you have a boyfriend? Hi. It's just... I was thinking about it since I got here. You told me how you say you have a boyfriend to guys who try to hit on you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he just wants to ask and confirm. She sounded a little defensive. Though... We had been together almost every day since I arrived, and she had never mentioned a boyfriend. But I had to be sure. There were friends at school who were in relationships that they kept secret. Everything about getting one? Assuming you could choose anyone you wanted? Oh, from when we were little? I guess some guys might be put off considering what you were like back then. <laughs> I couldn't help teasing her a bit. Whenever we got together, part of me felt like a little kid again. How about you go out with me then? Let's see how she reacts on the next episode. Oh my gosh, if that's not a cliffhanger, tell me what is. Oh my gosh, now that is a cliffhanger of cliffhangers. Man, oh man, oh man. Well, with that, I want to thank everyone for watching this video this time around. If you like what you saw, maybe consider leaving a like. And if you'd like to see more and you have not considered it already, maybe consider subscribing. And until next time, happy mixing, everyone.